Good morning from Carmarthen on the seventh day of my tour around South Wales. I absolutely love Carmarthen. Beautiful little town. I wish I could have stayed here longer. That was my original plan, was to spend an extra couple of days in the, in the Carmarthen area and visit St David's. But with the uncertainty over local transport on the bus, and more importantly the weather, I decided to have a, an extra day in Cardiff and uh, let's do St David's another time. But the original plan was now to head east towards Caerphilly and Chepstow and back to London via Bristol. But I've decided to go up to Aberystwyth, spend a couple of days there and then head back to London through Shrewsbury and Birmingham. This gives me a nice little stepping stone for a series around North Wales starting or ending in Aberystwyth. But to get to Aberystwyth I have to take the bus. So uh, head down to the bus station and find my bus to Aberystwyth. It's a U-Ton and it's electric. It's the first time I've ridden in a U-Ton bus and the ride is really uh, smooth. I have driven an electric bus and they are actually quite nice to drive in comparison to the old diesel buses. Seats are really comfortable as well. But a different type of seat to the ones that you find on a standard bus. It's free Wi-Fi there's a call button, a stop button on the back of the seat and there's a USB port as well and even a light which is really nice to see there's a little button for a coat hanger um, for, for, to hang a coat on just press the button and the button pops out and you can hang a, a coat or a bag on the back of the seat I've got the announcements <laughs> in one ear. <laughs> We're in Welsh first and then in English. I'm wondering how many people on the bus actually understand the Welsh. I think, I like to think that quite a few people actually understand the Welsh. <laughs> it's very difficult to talk <laughs> with someone speaking Welsh in, in my other ear. <laughs> But it's a good way to get around by bus and if, if this is the future of buses then I really like the future of buses. And the fare was reasonable as well, £3.75. I think that's pretty good value for a single trick, single ticket for, uh, for two and a half hours on a bus. Hello and welcome I'm going to enjoy my bus journey up to Aberystwyth. To Aberystwyth. Relax and enjoy your journey with us. When leaving the bus, press the bell and wait for the bus to stop before leaving your seat. Thank you for choosing to travel with Trous Cymru today. And I've arrived in Aberystwyth. Two and a half hours on the bus. But it was a good journey. I do like travelling by bus. And the sun is shining, which is absolutely brilliant. And about 16 degrees is the predicted forecast for today. I've arrived at the castle. And this is the, uh, the outer gate of the castle. Construction on the castle began in the year 1277. It's during the reign of King Edward I. From 1404 to 1408, the castle was in the hands of Owen Glendour. And then it fell to Prince Harry, who later became King Henry V. And during the English Civil War in 1649, the castle was occupied by parliamentarian forces. And it's the those forces under Oliver Cromwell that destroyed the castle. He slighted it down the walls and the towers to ensure 
that it couldn't be used as a defensive position again. And this was probably a great hall. There's no information plaques up to actually tell me, but quite a large space. It's probably the great hall. And there have been stairs going up into the towers and the upper floors. And you can see the fireplaces on the walls. But damage that was done by Cromwell's forces. It's a great shame, it really is. Could have been a fantastic castle up here on the cliff overlooking the sea and the town of Aberystwyth. But there's not much left here. There's more ruins here than there are on a great number of castles throughout Wales and England. So I suppose we have to be grateful that we do have what we have remaining. But up ahead is the uh, tower. So let's go and take a look at that. It's interesting having a walk around what would have been the inner courtyard area of the castle. Looking at the remains of the buildings that once stood here. Some other interesting tall stones as well. Arranged in some sort of circle. I wonder what they were used for. But the central tower here, this is the north gate. And uh, it just stands here alone. Reminder of what used to be here. A huge castle that used to be here. And I'm walking over what would have been a drawbridge, perhaps going into the castle. Defensive structure. There's a ditch behind me. And there's a couple of little cannons either side of the, uh, the gatehouse. But what the castle does offer is fine views overlooking the sea. So there's a coastal fortification. It would have done its job. You would have seen it from out to sea. And today, this gatehouse looks over the war memorial, which was unveiled on the 14th of September. 1500s when the castle was occupied by Owen Glendur. But it's just nice to walk in this defensive ditch. It really is nice looking at the stones. I'm glad that some of this has survived and that Cromwell's forces didn't totally destroy the castle as he did with so many around England and also in Wales as well. But round the corner here is the church. Let's go and take a look at that because there's a ruined church as well. So it was nice to have a look at a, a ruined church. The modern church is, uh, is St Michael's Church and it's the fourth church to stand on this site. First church dated from about the 15th century, but by the mid 18th century, it was in ruins. Its replacement only lasted about 40 years before that church was replaced between the years 1829 and 1833. 
Does that church was designed by uh, Edward Haycock of Shrewsbury. And all that remains of that church is this little, little bit here. There's not a lot here that has survived, but it's nice to know that it has survived. You can see the uh, different types of stone that make up the walls. And there's a couple of uh, gravestones as well. But just up through his arch is the, uh, the new church. That's, this is the fourth church, and it's built by Nicholson and Sons of Hereford between 1886 and 1890. It looks uh, quite magnificent. Let's head on down to the pier and see what we can discover down there. had a really enjoyable afternoon. Just walking through the castle, having a look at the church and the ruined church. And I've been onto the pier as well. The pier opened on Good Friday, 1865. And the pier was originally 794 feet or 242 meters long. But in January of 1866, a huge storm took the last 98 feet or 30 meters off of the pier. The storm caused a lot of destruction in the, uh, the town centre as well. It's interesting that on the first day the pier opened it attracted 7,000 paying visitors. Today it's free to go on, there's amusement arcade and um, get ice creams <laughs> and chips. <laughs> which is nice, which is nice. But this is where I'm going to end the video. Tomorrow I'm spending my last day here in Wales in Aberystwyth and I'm going to ride the funicular railway. So I'm really looking forward to that tomorrow. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow my journey. And we'll see you tomorrow for my last day here in Aberystwyth. Thanks for watching.